Parts of this episode of Garden Time were recorded before COVID-19 and social distancing requirements. Judy, there's just so many choices of plants this spring. Ah, uh, but you know what the easiest choice is? To watch a new episode of Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. We're out here at Seabright Gardens and the amount of plant material in bloom and ready to go is staggering. There's hostas and epimediums and ferns and fuchsias, oh my. And later in the show I'll be talking with Kirk about a beautiful selection that you could take home for your garden. Also coming up on the show today we'll be talking about hummingbirds and how to take care of them. We'll also be giving you some ideas about simple trellises. But coming up first, plants for small garden spaces. Well, we're out here at French Prairie Perennials with Rick. Rick, you know, it's spring and it's, you got a lot of great stuff in here, but today we're gonna focus on a few things that are maybe for the little smaller gardens, right? Right, I mean, what we've noticed, and especially part of the visual scaping part of our business, we've noticed that yards tend to, are getting smaller. Um, you know, with new houses going in and that type of thing, they're just not leaving a lot of space in some right. of the backyard. So just because you have a small yard doesn't mean you have to sacrifice color or interest. You just need to pick the right plant material. Right, and it looks like you've picked some kind of some fun goodies, some conifers and some other, other shrubs here. Right, too. yeah. First one we've got is Camisipa specifera golden pincushion. Throughout the summer, it has this kind of a golden green look to it. But in the wintertime, when the temperatures are colder, it'll get more gold in it. Very well-behaved plant, uh, grows very uniformly. Uh, looks like you've spent hours pruning it, but you haven't really done anything to it. It grows that way, so you can take all the credit, but you don't have to do any of the work. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, a, a foot and a half by two feet. Oh, wow. Uh, garden size. So it is a dwarf, but that's one thing you have to be careful about with, with plant material. There's two things. A lot of times with conifers, you'll see a 10 year growth right. on the tag. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean a garden size. What that means is after 10 years, it'll be that size. But you have to remember with plants like this, by the time you buy them, they could be four to five years old already. So a lot right. of people look at see 10 year growth and say, oh, I have 10 years okay. before it gets that size. No, you probably have four to five years before it gets that size. Gotcha. So the other thing is, the term dwarf is just a growth rate. And that's a very important thing to remember because there's four groups of conifers that refer to growth rate and that's miniature, which is one to two inches a year, dwarf, which is three to six, intermediate, which is six to 12, and then large, which is 12 plus. Okay. So it's just a, you know, dwarf is relative to the species. So when you see it as a dwarf, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be small. There are some dwarfs that get right. 20 feet by 15 feet. So, because it's relative to the species. So just be careful. Right. It, is, it is going to grow. Just it is going right. to grow. Right. But, you know, ask your expert or your garden center right. uh, exactly what the size is going to be as far as a garden size go. And you'll get a better idea. Right, because so, you want to plan accordingly when you're putting it in correct. there that you know that it's not going to be too crammed in a year correct. or two or correct. You'll look like it's just swimming yeah. in a sea of bark dust by itself. Right, exactly. So one and a half to two years is a garden size for this. Okay. So that's going to be at mature. Gotcha. Okay, closer. and then you got a couple other goodies. You got a couple there. more. This is Abies balsamia piccolo, which is another, is another miniature. This is a one to two inch a year grower. Uh, two by two on this one will be a garden size. But what I really like about it is it'll turn more blue over the summer, but it also the new growth is this kind of a really light green, and that'll hold for about six to eight weeks. And so it has that kind of a contrasting color to it, but another really well-behaved plant. Right, which is kind of nice to have a little bit of changing throughout the seasonal interest, even though it does stay, stay an evergreen, that it's, uh, you know, it does have a little bit of change to it. Right, and it also gives you a different texture. It gives you the, it is a fur, so right. I mean, it kind of gives you that that different texture in the garden. The third one is a pieris called cavatine, which is another dwarf. Uh, garden size on this one, again, is gonna be two by three or so. Right. Uh, flowers in the spring, also may reflower again uh, later on in the year. Stay small. Um, you know, it's a typical pieris, so once right. it's done blooming, it's, it's not and super it's, do you, interesting. Do you get the coloring on the new growth? Uh, not on this one, no. Okay, that one stays no. like that. But you do That's get flaming the silver or, okay. or uh, uh, a couple of the other varieties that, that okay. will get that new red growth to it, but not this one. Gotcha. And okay. then a couple other goodies here. This is Nana Arescence, right. which is a U. Uh, spring flushes out this bright yellow growth and holds through the summer. Uh, in the wintertime, it'll go back to a little bit more green, but 
It's a very bright yellow uh, during the summer. Again, two feet tall. This can get a little bit wider if you let it. This can get up to six to eight feet wide if you let it, okay. but you can keep it under control by just pruning it. Right. So. And then some of these will do better in, in more of a sh little bit of partial shade, or are they all, all more of a sun? Uh, most of these are full sun. Okay. A couple of them will do okay in the shade. Uh, golden pin cushion will take some shade. Okay. And so will this one, which is the a, a Thuya orientalis called Autumn Moon. The great thing about this, mature size on this is going to be about three by three, but the great thing about it is in the wintertime, it'll have orange and red kind of a oh, tint pretty. to it. It's really, really pretty. And then during the summer, you get a nice green and gold uh, mix to it. But it's kind of a globe shape. Again, it grows fairly uniformly, right. so it doesn't a take a lot of A nice pruning. habit to it, sure. Right, yes. But and then this little guy looks like a nice, real tight habit to that. It is. That's just dandy, which is a Hinoki cypress. And again, it grows very, like golden pincushion, grows very uniformly. You don't have to prune it. It's a nice little ball. Um, well, more of a mushroom, I guess, than a ball. But again, a foot and a half by two feet is okay. mature mature growth on that one so and then something other than you know, like a conifer would be what that's a belia kaleidoscope and that's going to be three by four at mature mature size it also flowers has a white flower on it okay cool thing about that one is it is evergreen and then in the winter time it gets a kind of a real bright red and orange kind of a look to it along with the the gold and the green right and this one does it get a little flower too right it does it's yeah, white flower, flower yeah so you know so you, you have a you know an amazing selection out here you know kind of something for every situation in the yard, being in a container or the small spaces, or you know, if you want something that can get big too, but it's nice to see a, a lot of things that you can do in these smaller size yards. Right, so. yeah, exactly. exactly. So Rick, you know, it's a, always a pleasure to be out here with you and you know, to see the great selection you know, to be on a beautiful day like this as we're all getting out in, in our garden. So make sure you come down to French Prairie Perennials, visit Rick and his staff, and get some great ideas for those smaller spaces. So. Thank you, Rick. You bet. Thank you. And if you happen to be by Little Prince, uh, take a look at his shoes because you know they're pretty. <laughs> they're pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Garden time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery. Gardening makes for wonderful family time. Whether it's updating your landscape or planting a veggie garden, at Portland Nursery, our great selection and staff of professionals can help ensure your family's success. Visit PortlandNursery.com for a list of our classes, events, or sign up for our newsletter. Portland Nursery, let our family help your family grow at 50th and Stark or 90th and Division. Garden time is on the road again. Join us as we tour Portugal and Spain in the fall of 2021. We start in Lisbon, where we tour the palaces and gardens of royalty. Then we make our way across Spain with visits to the Mesquita and the world-famous Alhambra. Enjoy the sights, sounds, and tastes of Andalusia before we end up in exciting Madrid. Local transportation, hotels, and 26 of your meals are included. Go to Garden Time Tours for more information, and we'll see you in Europe. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. Since 1982, the wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, the wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Look around your home's exterior. Those ugly orange, green, and black algae stains look terrible. Clean them the easy way with 30 Seconds Outdoor Cleaner. It's fast and works on all outdoor surfaces. With 30 Seconds, it's clean when you want it clean. Build a beautiful home inside and out at French Prairie Perennials. Inside, we have just the right creative elements to complete your decor. We offer an oasis of unusual, nature-inspired garden and home gifts and accessories. Outside, choose from our wide selection of unique dwarf conifers and sparkling companion plants. French Prairie Perennials, located between Woodburn and Wilsonville. Take exit 278 to Aurora and French Prairie Perennials.
we have some great ideas for you for some trellises that you can make at home and they're very simple to make. This first one is a great one. It's PVC pipes with slip joints and it's actually an A-frame that you can adjust to how wide you want it and then at the end of the season it folds up and you can store it really easily. And the other one is a tomato cage. Of course we use them for our tomatoes but it's even easier to use, um, also easier to use for peas or sweet peas, even a clematis. And the one trick for these, both of these, is you want to plant on the inside of the trellis or the inside of the tomato cage. This way when you're hoeing around the edges for weeds, you won't damage the fruit plants. You know, and another simple one to do is, is just taking three sticks. These were just uh, three that we picked up at a local hardware store or garden center. But you could also use, you know, pieces of bamboo out of your yard or tree branches. So we just take the three sticks. We take a little bit of stretchy film. You can use any twine or ribbon. We just kind of wrap that a little bit. We'll tie it just to hold the tops together. And this will create just a little teepee. And then we'll just brace out the bases. It makes it quick and easy. Once again, we'll plant right in the middle and let everything twine up. And we got one more we'll show you over here on the fence. And the final simple step is to just run some string between two posts. These are two posts we already had in the yard. We're just taking some basic string. We got the hardware store. We're zigzagging it through through these eye bolts. And the nice thing about this, the string will last about a season. So when you're all done, you can just take it all down and dispose of it with your plants. So here's a few simple tricks on how to trellis up your plants. We hope it's easy for you in the garden. I am at the wonderful Seabright Gardens today with the wonderful Kirk. And oh. Kirk, you know, it's so beautiful to come to your place and to see your gardens because it gives us so many ideas. And you don't mind us taking pictures, do you? No, not at all. Everyone can come and take photos. Yeah. yeah they don't need permission. Good, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Because it does have so many um, different ideas. And we all have these kind of tough places that we want to do, you know, plant. But you have so many lovely plants here. Yeah, we've gotten a little carried away. Yeah, so, yeah. Too, but, so let's kick off. So yeah. let's start on this end, and if you can tell us about this beautiful bleeding heart. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is the Dicentra spectabilis, a, a pink bleeding heart. It is um, it's a great plant. You know, it's been around for many years, and one thing I've discovered with it is that it can take a drier area of the garden, which is you know difficult to plant in some some. So here, our native our native plants, they soak up a lot of moisture. Their roots are more fibrous. I found they perform well in those drier, drier locations. In fact, this winter I moved the pots that we overwintered underneath a fir tree for the winter, and those are doing fantastic. Excellent. So, Excellent. yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And speaking of dry shade, or drier shady area, I mean, this these can grow in full sun to full shade, and um, we have this this pine tree right behind us. I have the Solomon seal right at the base of the uh, of the uh, pine tree there. It's growing great. It's starting to bloom now here in spring, which is you know, added bonus, those nice, lightly fragrant flowers. Very nice. And, um, well, what do you have here that's blooming so prolific? Oh, this Triorella, this is wow. Spring Symphony. And I just, they're lightly fragrant and they're so nice. And this time of year in spring, they're just, they're just such super performers. They, they just need, you know, some well-drained soil. They can, and they're, they're a little, they're a pretty easy plant to grow in the garden. Nice. Nearly full shade to partial shade. Beautiful. It works great, yeah. And then blue, I love having blue yeah, in the garden. Yeah, these are just opening up. I love this Curtilus porcelain blue. It, it, it blooms, I swear it blooms 12 months of the year. Every time I see it, it's blooming. It's just starting to open now. So you can't quite see the, the full effect of the flowers, but, but it's a super performer and it's been evergreen here. During the last winter storm, it, it, it uh, looked a little sad for a few days and then it just pounced back, back up with new foliage. So I, I got a, uh, porcelain blue there. It's just kind of cute too. Yeah, and blue heron. Yeah. It's tiny, but it's not a thistle. Yeah, the Canthus spinosa. It's, um, I got a couple of here. This one was growing in full shade and this one in partial sun. The flower is coming the one in the partial sun because it's in a pot, but a little earlier than normal. But um, I planted one, I lived in Portland many years ago, uh, last century actually, and uh, I had one of these planted at the base of a fir tree, a big old fir tree in the back, my backyard, and wow. it is still there doing great. And it's just amazing how, and they're nice because they're so versatile, you can plant them in full shade to full sun. It, it doesn't matter. They perform well in any, any environment. So, and, and you nice are, go ahead. I'm sorry, you're known for your hostas. Yeah, oh amazing. yeah, you can't come to Seabright without knowing about hostas. <laughs> We're, we are one of the largest hosta nurseries this half of the United States. So. Um, I pulled out a couple that look nice at this time of year. You know, they, some of them have their show at certain times of the year where they're really showy. 
This here is I Declare. It has that nice bright color to it. And uh, First Frost, this is a great hosta. First Frost, it's the colors in, this, in, in spring are just so striking and um, it has thicker leaves. So, you know, if you have slugs, you, you got to put them to work for them to really get their <laughs> meal there. It's going to take them a while to get through those leaves. And you know, yeah. I love that you have them around the garden, not just yeah. in the ground, but in containers. So you could do that in the yeah. garden or on a deck or something. Yeah, in fact, I was looking at that going, that needs to go in a container. <laughs> it would look so nice in a container. Yeah, they, Beautiful. they, they, they make a nice show. Um, what else you got? Well, I have, um, this time of year in the spring here, we have the Pacific Coast Iris blooming. And we have, a select, we have selections here we offer that are um, ones, um, we, a friend down in Australia, we went to his place and, oh. and we're just amazed at his uh, Pacific Coast Iris seedlings which you know it's, <laughs> it's our native plant but they're they're just doing an awesome job down Beautiful. there he was so he um hybridized some for us and this is one of his one of the selections from his uh, hybridizing work one of uh, several that we have so nice. yeah yeah and really you're so well known too for your epimedium collection yeah, because not too many people have those yeah so. we, beautiful we have this time of year they they look so nice they they they're distant related to the mahonia oregon grape oh. so they um they um they're pretty easy to grow in the garden. They can, once they're established, they can take drought even, which is nice. You know, we have a difficult time with our Mediterranean type summers. So sure, it's definitely. nice to have that. Um, I just wanted to point out this one here. Ooh. You know, some of they have different colors of leaves. I really like this creamsicle. It, oh. You know, it starts off, here's one here, it has pink tones and then they fade to white. Wow. So yeah, the flowers are white, so they don't, they're not really showy with that white foliage, but. Yeah. Very anyway. nice. And fern collection, you have uh, so many different ferns, yes, so just yep. a few of those. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to point out a few. Right now, this is in the garden. This uh, sunset fern is um, um, up up right now as well in the garden. It's 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 pretty reddish orange in the garden, but here in this pot, you can see some of the last year's earlier foliage. And then nice. the ear lady fern is, is really nice, so that light, light green with the red, red stems and deep red, um, almost mahogany. Uh, Burgundy, isn't it? Pretty. Yeah. And, and the frilly one. That's just a fun one, that parsley leaf fern. It's a and, good name for it. And iris, because that's another part of your business, is yeah, iris. Yeah. Um, here at the location, Mid America Garden is here as well, and they specialize in bearded iris, and they have a huge selection of, of dwarf bearded iris, which work great in the garden. You, you know, a neglected spot that's sunny and dry, you know, if something that's cute they're, they're just great performers at this nice. time of year yeah and then you have these early and then you go into the taller ones exactly. so really you have a long season of yes iris. exactly yeah yeah absolutely and then if so. you can touch on your fuchsia collection yeah wow. i just couldn't help myself they're they're, they're they did pretty well in the garden they were they probably would have bloomed if we didn't have that one winter storm we had so um anyway but i you know these are ones that we prevented from freezing mm -hmm. and they're starting to bloom now and i just i just thought you know, we have a huge selection here that we offer in our shopping area. So I thought we should uh, bring them out so you can. Oh my gosh, you do it. People are aware of some of the stuff we carry that we don't advertise. Right, on our website. right. So, yeah. Well, because it's like, how, how much can you talk about on TV or on a, on a commercial? So that's why we come out to visit, but you <laughs> have to come out and visit and see this unbelievable collection of plants that you could take home and the display gardens. Please go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to Seabright Gardens website and get all the information to get out here. Thanks so much. Happy Thank spring. Thank you. Yeah, happy spring. Spring is all about freshness, and you can't get any fresher than Blooming Junction. From new and interesting annuals and perennials that can bring fresh color to your garden, to the freshest of produce from our fields and from local growers. We can also help you be successful with our full slate of timely and helpful classes. Freshen up your home and garden, inside and out, with a visit to Blooming Junction. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens and great tasting food for your table. You work hard in the garden. Shouldn't your gloves do the same? Garden Like a Girl makes gloves and apparel from natural, recycled, and organic materials. Garden Like a Girl gloves will help you tackle any job. They are designed to fit, protect your hands and nails, and they last. Plus, 10% of our profits go to cancer research. To learn more about Garden Like a Girl products, go to our website, gardenlikeagirl.com. Garden Like a Girl, ruggedly feminine. Celebrate a spring tradition, visit the Old Eclager Lilac Gardens during the annual Lilac Days. Open daily from 10 to 4. See hundreds of blooming lilacs. 
Take exit 21 off I-5 in Woodland, Washington. Color, color, color. When you think of your garden, think of color. Then think of Margie's Farm and Garden. High quality plants and great customer service are our trademark. We make sure you're happy with every purchase. Whether you're a first time gardener or a seasoned professional, we'll help you be successful every time you step into your garden. Vegetables or herbs, hanging baskets or perennials, trust Margie's Farm and Garden, just off I-5 near Aurora. For over 100 years, Collier Arbor Care and Bartlett Tree Experts have provided tree and shrub care services to the Portland metropolitan area. From large tree and small shrub pruning, tree removal and stump grinding, we can handle all your tree care needs. Our arborists diagnose and treat your toughest insect and disease problems. We also have organic solutions for growing and maintaining healthy gardens, as well as organic nutrition for your trees and shrubs. Collier and Bartlett, environmentally friendly since 1907. Well, it's spring, and as we're spending more time out in our yards and in our gardens, you know, we kind of look at our lawns a little bit differently. I'm here with John from JB Instant Lawn. And John, I just redid my lawn here, and I did a little overseeding because it was full of a lot of moss and a lot of things I wasn't real happy with <laughs> from, from the wintertime. And, you know, and as we're looking at kind of revamping our lawns, there's a couple different routes of we can go. We can either, like, redo our entire lawn and take it all out and restart fresh, or we can do an overseeding, right? Yeah. So if we are, you know, starting fresh, what do we need to know about how do we, how do we prep and do our, our yard for, like, starting from scratch? Well, first of all, I mean, considering the area, uh, if there's, like, a lot of weeds, a lot of rocks, we need to probably get all those out first, right? Right. Level it out. Uh, apply lime. Lime is your friend, okay. for, especially for the northwest area. Um, and then um, put down the seed and um, then water it. However, uh, with this process, we need to consider how we put the seed on it. Right. So in actuality, we, as a professional, you should probably level it and then roll it and then put down the lime, okay. the seed, and also uh, the fertilizer. Okay. And then water accordingly. And it's important to keep that that water, because as that you know seed starts to sprout, we don't want it to dry out, right? Absolutely, absolutely, and especially right now at this point of time, I w this April is amazingly dry. So yes, good watering, right. moist at all times. So if you know if we already have a lawn established like I did, you know I had a lot of moss in it, and so I'd gone through and removed and mossed out and got rid of all that moss and all the weeds out of there. But then I was left with a pretty pretty sparse looking looking lawn. So is there, you know, do we do something differently with the lawn as far as an overseeding versus starting scratch? Yeah, for overseeding, um, you have the existing area, such as when you, when you put the moss out on it, right. it died basically. So there was different areas where there's a lot of sparse basically right. in that right. area. So uh, to overseed that is you should probably try to get that out as best as possible. Right. And then mow it as low as you can. So when you actually put the seed on, it can actually touch the soil. Right, because otherwise it's going to get kind of suspended up in, in that grass where it's not going to germinate in the air. It needs to be touching that soil. Absolutely, right? Right. absolutely. It has to touch the soil for it to grow. Right. And then also, you know, same, same concept, you need to keep it moist. Absolutely, at all times, right. especially again during these periods of time with these dry out times, they have to be moist within probably two to three weeks. Right, and when I did my overseeding, I, I did a layer of like a peat moss. For us, we, we, we like to give a little bit more nutrition, Okay. maybe a, a compost, a lawn oh. compost, and just feathering it on, never... Right, not, not buried it, exactly. buried it all. It exactly, just, enough, just feathering it on and then water accordingly. And then, you know, there's lots of choices for, for grass seed when you go in. You know, JB's done a great job of kind of laying it out pretty easy packaging to read. But there are some basics we need to kind of look at as far as, you know, what seed do we use? So how do we pick out what seed is going to be best for our lawn? You'll notice on this particular one here, um, you're going to see a sunlight, six hours right. of sunlight. So this particular variety is a three-way blend of ryegrass. It basically is a Northwest uh, product. 
Um, and it germinates very, very quickly. And it has a unique color to it. It's a deep blue green color okay. to it. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And um, in this area, because of the weather, it grows very, very quickly. It usually germinates within 10 to 15 days. Right, okay. Yeah. And then there are some also that if you have more of a, sh a shady area, right? Yes, absolutely. So this one here, as it shows, uh, sun and shade. Uh, a lot of people <laughs> make this very difficult. It, sun just is perennial rye, and this shade is a fine fescue. So if you have a shade issue, right. which is five, it needs at least five hours of sunlight. So with this pr particular product, it will handle some of the shaded areas. Right. But um, very good product. Right. Because like in my lawn here, I get a lot of, you know, like a morning sunshine and an afternoon shade. So I'm getting a lot of a lot of moss. Right. In mine. So this, right. that was what, kind of what I chose for mine because it's getting it is getting sun. Right. But just not all all yes. day long. Yeah. Exactly. So John, why is it important to look at kind of the type of grass seed that's in the package? Well because this particular product, all these products are grown here locally. Um, um, and this product actually is made or fit for this area completely. So there is no bluegrass in this product. Right. Bluegrass grows other places. Right. But ryegrass, fine fescue, tall fescue grow perfectly in this area. And we've actually made all of these to make sure that all the customers has what they need. Right. So, you know, it's important to pick out, you know, the right grass seed for your yard. You know, JB's uh, seed is grown here locally, which is important. To, so we have a success when we're growing our grass in our yard. So, John, you know, I'm assuming we get more information on your website or you can go to gardentime.tv for more information on JB sod and the lawn and the grass seed that's right for your yard. So, John, it's a pleasure having you out in my yard and thanks for making it pretty. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Backflow is a program, it's a state regulated program for public water systems, uh, a cross connection program. And when we say backflow, we're talking about water has an intended direction, it's supposed to go that way. Well, the backflow is that through water hydraulics, for some reason, the water is coming back to us, and we don't want that. And so the backflow or the cross connection program that the public water system has um, uses plumbing devices to keep the water going one direction and not allowing it to come back and bringing anything with it we wouldn't want in the water so it maintains water quality. Excellent, excellent. So we're right at the street and this is the water meter. Yep. And so really everybody has one. You should know where that is for yes, your house you in case you ever need to shut off the water because there's some kind of problem. Yeah, that's a handy thing to do. Always know where your main shut off valve is and sometimes it's here in the box. You might even have one next to your house too. But yeah, so this is where your meter is now when we're talking about cross connection and backflow and protecting against backflow, two most common places that you're going to find a backflow assembly, which is that plumbing device that keeps the water from coming back, you're either going to find it near your meter box. Okay. Now in this case, because we have the sidewalk right here, it would probably be on the water line right on the other side, be inside of a box, you know, what we would call an irrigation box, they're typically green. And the most common backflow assembly that you're going to find mm -hmm. looks like this. This is a double check backflow assembly. They're very common on the main line to the home from the meter. This is also very, very common on the underground irrigation system. So if your backflow assembly is not located on this main line, the other place where it's located is where your irrigation system is connected to mm -hmm. the main line to your house. Same thing, it's inside a green irrigation box. Right, and I think a lot of us, because we want to save water, we want to water efficiently, and we also want to make it easier to water, we get irrigation systems. And if you're doing it by yourself, you really want to maybe do all the trenching and everything, but call professionals in to establish and to install all the backflow devices. Yeah, most definitely. And then that way they'll get tested too. You you know, I mean, you c people do install them on their own, but they don't understand mm. what they're for. Sure. And then, and then the fact again, it goes back to that regulated program that that the public water systems have, and they they have to be tested on an annual basis, once annually. And so if you do have an irrigation installed, whether you had a professional do it for you or you did it yourself, mm -hmm. you need to contact your water provider and let them know that this is what you've done and you know now where do I go with this backflow assembly. Well, you do have another um, yeah. system there too. So in case you don't have the one underground, there is an above ground too. Yeah, there's. Um, you would see these are above ground. The application for that one is that they are installed below ground most commonly. Mm -hmm. This one right here, it's application is most definitely above ground. If this is ever installed below ground, we have a big problem, <laughs> not to be below ground. But this one right here is a pressure vacuum breaker. Now there's this one and one very similar to it. Mm -hmm. um, this is a testable assembly. The other one is actually a backflow device. It's not testable, but it can be inspected. And these, like that one, they prevent water from flowing backwards. But these two are most definitely the common, common, you'll see them out there. And if you have a yard and you have an irrigation system, you've got one of these little darlings sticking <laughs> up out of the ground and you've never even looked at it right. or had it tested, you should. Right. Yeah. Well, this is a lot of information and really it's very important because we want to have great quality of water for all of us. Right. So if you have any other questions, you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over to the consortium. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. It's springtime and it's time to get our decks and patios ready for the season. You know, a lot of times we'll just clean the tops of our deck and call it good. But we want to remember that underneath our deck, there are some cross beams that run underneath here. And it's important that we clean out between the cracks of these boards because we get a lot of debris that will sit on that cross beam and that can cause rot over time. So what we'll do is we just took like a little spatula, we grabbed these out of the kitchen. The nice thing about these is they're not real metal and they're not gonna scratch or damage our, our decking. So all we have to do is kind of run this between here and we'll run in, into this cross beam that's right here and just kind of scrape off all the debris that's under there. Continue on. And that's our tip of the week, how to expand our deck and patio so that it doesn't rot away.
Since 1987, French Prairie Gardens has brought you the best in farm fresh produce, beautiful plants, and memorable family events. Spring is here, and now is the time to get your garden ready with our wide selection of bedding plants and hanging baskets. Experience the best the country has to offer at French Prairie Gardens. For 90 years, Espoma has one guiding principle, develop the finest organic gardening products that work in harmony with nature, grow beautiful gardens, and make a greener world for the future. From our soil products to our plant foods, we have always been committed to the environment and sustainability. We use a vast array of natural and organic ingredients and package them in our 100% solar powered plant. Look for the quality line of Espoma products at your local independent garden center. Espoma, organic from the beginning. Come to where the color is, come to Egan Gardens. We've worked hard growing healthy plants for you so that your gardening is easy. Add sparkle to your garden with our perennials, container plants, and skillfully designed baskets and planters. Stop and get a mood lifter out here on the farm. We have lots of fresh air and lots of space. There's lots of blooming plants, new vegetable starts, shrubs, and berry bushes. Egan Gardens, where it's all about the plants. We're located west of I-5 at exit 263 on River Road. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terra Casa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terra Casa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terra Casa. Terra Casa in downtown Damascus. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. In Oregon, we are so lucky to have hummingbirds being able to come to our garden. And we have some great tips for you to attract them to your garden. I'm with Amanda from Backyard Bird Shop. And Amanda, you have a wonderful selection that we can put in our own garden to bring joy to see the hummingbirds. Absolutely. We try to have a wide variety of hummingbird feeders. And, um, but of course, one of our first recommendations is plant, 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 right? Sure, and definitely. And that's something Garden Time knows a lot about. We have so many fun flowers and plants that really bring in um, hummingbirds right into your yard this time of year. It is nice. And so why can't we do that during the summertime? But when the weather isn't nice, the flowers aren't blooming, we need to put out feeders to attract them and feed them. Sometimes even when the flowers are blooming, we still put them out, don't <laughs> that is we? so true. Absolutely. So we have bottle feeders, we have window feeders, and then this is my personal favorite style of feeder is um, the saucer style feeder. It's really easy to open, to clean mm. thoroughly, and, um, and it doesn't leak. And I just, I love this. You can, this one you can actually even put in the dishwasher and keep it clean, but it's a great way to bring it in. This has got the little high raised side, so it kind of puts them at a fun angle while you watch them feed. And then keeping this close to a window was really fun to watch. That is right. And then what do we put in that feeder? What kind of a solution? So you can make your own nectar right at home with plain white table sugar. And it's a half a cup of table sugar to two cups of water and you boil the water so you can dissolve the sugar all in there. But it's really important to use the really cheap, plain white table sugar. No molasses, no honey, no organic brown sugar. And all the stuff that we try to do to be healthy <laughs> is not what's closest to nature for the hummingbird. So we want to keep it as close to the nectar they would find in flowers. And then sometimes I see that the solution is red. And so is that important? It's important to not put red mm. dye in there. We really don't know about the safety of red dye. And so that's why when you look at the hummingbird feeders, there's always going to have some bit of red. It doesn't have to be a full red hummingbird bird feeder but at least the little flower spots will be red and so that'll draw your hummingbirds in and that way you know they're still getting something pure and healthy for them. Ah. And then let's talk about cleanliness because we want them to be healthy so what can we do? So we always preach if you're gonna feed feed any type of bird it's important to do it responsibly and with hummingbirds it's so important to keep the feeders clean and so we have little brushes that you can use to get in those little nooks and crannies or you can use a q-tip all kinds of different things
things to do. But changing the nectar often and really cleaning the feeder out, especially in the summertime, sometimes it's every one to three days wow. when the heat is at the highest. But um, but what I do is I put I make my nectar and I keep it in a glass jar in my fridge. You can keep it in the fridge for about two weeks and then just fill it maybe a quarter of the way so you're not wasting anything and then you're just constantly cleaning out your feeder and refilling it. Ah, that's so responsible yeah and I know that um, uh, hummingbirds love to go to nectar they love to go to feeders but they also need protein too so you have this cool new feeder. We do so we have um, this is a humbug and it's this cool little feeder that you can put like banana banana peels in and other things like that to kind of help create a fruit fly <laughs> feeder. And so I definitely do not recommend hanging this anywhere near your kitchen because you don't want to invite them into your home. Sure. But out in the yard it's really fun because obviously hummingbirds eat insects all it's, it's a regular part of their diet but why do we feed them? To watch them. <laughs> and so if we want to watch them, it's a fun way to kind of keep them in one centralized area, flying up and down, grabbing those fruit flies. It's really fun and exciting to do. Oh, that is true. And then this year is really an important year for you. So tell us about it. So this is our 30th anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you so much. It's been such a blessing to be in this community for so long. And in celebration of our 30th anniversary, we decided to play in a year of giving back to nature, specifically with some with a variety of nonprofits in our community. And so um, this kind of tells a little bit about it. And so each month from March 2021 to February 2022, we have a different nonprofit that we're donating a percentage of our proceeds to um, that are giving back to our community right here in our neighborhood. And so it's just so important. They, they're doing that hard work out there for us. And so it's important for us to kind of support them and educate our community on what they're doing for our neighborhood. Oh, and you know, you can support Backyard Bird Shop and in turn support all of these nonprofits when you come here and get all of your bird supplies. So please go to gardentime.tv and click over to their website. They have great newsletters, all kinds of information, and you can find out about this giving back to the community. Amanda, thanks so much and congratulations. Thank you so much. No matter what shade your green thumb is, you can find the plants and the help you need at Wavra Farms. We're filled with an astounding array of colorful plants to fill your garden. In addition to wonderful annuals and perennials, we are known for our hanging baskets. We also have all your garden essentials and we have great garden gifts too. From beginner to expert, you'll find something new and different with every visit. Wavra Farms, located off Highway 22, exit five, east of Salem. Ryan, you need to brush up your look. Ryan, that is better. It's always better when you show off your Garden Time pride. Check out the Garden Time store on our webpage for a great selection of Garden Time gifts and apparel. Choose a hoodie, shirt, hat, bag, or mask for yourself or as a gift for the Garden Time fan in your life. See the complete selection on the Garden Time website. Pick up some Garden Time gear and show your Garden Time pride. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. It's time for a plant adventure. Come visit the nurseries of the Cascade Nursery Trail, a collection of independent specialty nurseries full of wonderful plants that deserve a visit. It's April Palooza. To celebrate, all our member nurseries are open every Friday and Saturday from 10 to 5 for your safe shopping pleasure. Start your perfect plant safari at CascadeNurseryTrail.com. Little Baja is your source for a whole lot of terracotta and concrete too. From bird baths and benches to Buddhas, bears and fountains, plus the exclusive Baja Chimney. We have an amazing variety of the finest in terracotta and concrete containers. Come check out our selection of statuary for any garden theme or setting. So for something for the garden deck or patio, come see us at Little Baja on East Burnside in Portland. Find us on Facebook too.
I am at Out in the Garden Nursery with Carol, and Carol, we love coming out here at any time of the year because you have the most beautiful display gardens. Thank so you. lovely. Really worth to come out to this dry, you know, drive to come out from the city or wherever you live to see it. And I think um, today you have some beautiful plants. I don't see any flowers, but what is your philosophy with this group of plants? Well, I'm a foliage person overall. I think it's really, I love flowers, They're, but I look at them as a bonus. I don't buy a plant just because of the, the flowers. I, like, I prefer to go for foliage. So I've picked a lot of things that here, it's very, very early spring, they're just coming up, but they're gonna give us a long season of interest with or without flowers. Oh, okay, so what do you have? So we'll start here. These are a couple um, Acteas. They used to be Simisifugas. They have beautiful foliage. This is a green, and obviously this is a beautiful dark. This is brunette. Um, they're a wonderful color texture all season. They don't bloom until September, October. Nice. And nice. then they're fragrant too. Ah, and sun or shade? They're actually partial shade. Right. Um, keep them out of the hot sun. Little morning sun keeps the color better. All right, and then this one is kind of chartreuse. Yeah, that's the same. That's a triceratus. It's another one. Comes up early, beautiful foliage, has a really interesting purple flower late in the season. Usually, uh, this one's about August, so it's a little bit early. But so you just have most of your season is just the foliage, and then you have a really interesting flower later and on. And it looks like orchids. That one's a gorgeous yes, one. Yes, they're really amazing. And then this I love because I don't even, I've never seen a flower on it. Yeah, this is an Aurelia. This is Sun King. Gets to be a huge foliage plant. They're easily three by three. I've heard of mature ones bigger than that. Mm -hmm. They are supposedly have a white flower and a, and a black <laughs> um, berry, but it's I don't think I've ever seen one either. It's Or it's underneath so much you don't even see it because you're looking at that beautiful right, foliage. But stunning foliage. Exactly. That chartreuse is gorgeous. It and is. then these look like ferns, but they're not. They're not. That's what I love about these. These are a runcus, and actually I like a runcus better than a stilbe's. Mm. Um, they don't have the color range when they do bloom that a stilbe does. They have little creamy white flowers. Um, they're much more drought tolerant, uh -huh. and, and they're much more versatile. You know, the stilbies, they get too dry. That's the end of them. Um, but I just love these are a couple different kinds of aruncus. These are medium height. There's some dwarf and there's some large ones And for as shade. Well. And their shade as well. They're very okay. versatile. And then these kind of look like onions maybe? They are. They're an allium. So they're, okay. but they're more in the chive family. They're not the bulb kind. They're the more, they, well, I take a it back. Clumps? This one has a bulb. This okay. one actually is a clump. This is a little nodding one. Has a beautiful little delicate um, lavender flower in May and June. It's a nice rock garden plant. Um, this is um, a more in the chive side of the family. This is Tangudium. Has a nice big two inch lavender flower in um, June and July. Cool the bees love oh, them. And we do and want to talk about these. Yes, sure. the bees really, really love them. They come up really early, so you have this interesting strappy foliage now, and then you have beautiful flowers in the summer. Great, and a sedum. You don't even think about sedums this early, but they're so cute, the foliage. They are, and they come up early, so you have this foliage really, really early, and then of course they have beautiful fall flowers that actually hold into winter interest. Uh, and that's for sun. That's for sun, yeah. Both them and the alliums are sun. And then another ferny plant. This is another, yeah, I like, again, <laughs> textures, things that look like other things that aren't those. Sure. Um, this is an Artemisia Gijou group. It's um, a lot of people know the silver ones that mm -hmm. are very drought tolerant. Right, right. Totally and, but, different. But yeah, totally different. This one is not drought tolerant. It's a sun lover, but it wants some regular summer water. But it's also a summer bloomer. So oh, it ends nice. up with three to four foot little clusters of white flowers. Um, sometimes I like almost the bloom process because it has these big stems that come up really slowly. And then they open to these little tiny flowers. Very cool. But they're not real showy flowers individually, but in mass, they're very lovely. And they're July, August. Oh, nice. And then you have a collection of hardy geraniums. I love hardy geraniums. It's one of my favorite plant groups. They're just they're so versatile, they're so easy sun to part shade on most of them. Some are, end up like, this is one that I just love. It's Kamina, it's called. It's a beautiful um, foliage plant. It does have hot pink flowers for several weeks, um, but then it's just this really nice filler in the garden. Nice. And then this is Ann Thompson, this is Roseanne, which are two of the best geraniums on mm -hmm. the market. Um, once they start blooming, they'll bloom till fall, but until they bloom, they have beautiful foliage. Excellent, and this one hit with the pink. This is a, a pulmonium. It's called um, Stairway to Heaven. So it starts out very pink and then it'll end up to be a white and green cream with a little bit of pink and beautiful light blue flowers in May and June. Ah. Carol, this one has pretty dramatic foliage. What's this called? This is a Ligularia. This is Brit Marie, which is the darkest Ligularia in the market. Wow. That's another group of plants that I really, really like that I think are underused. Um, a lot of people don't like them. The slugs get into them and they're really Eight. sensitive for water, but they're such beautiful container they plants. Are. And they actually do have a summer flower, mm -hmm. bright orange yellow flower in the summer, which is really nice. And then all this beautiful foliage in between. Very nice. So you have to come out and see the other Ligularias that she has here. It's a great place to come out in the garden nursery in Molala and really come and stroll the gardens and have a lovely afternoon. Thanks so much. Thanks for coming, Judy.
At Garland Nursery, you'll find top quality plants, four generations of garden know-how, fun and fantastic garden decor, and the best in garden supplies. Come visit us at Garland Nursery. Since 1937, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. Since 1929, Grimm's Fuel has powered great gardens around our area. With our comprehensive composting and yard debris services, we can apply quality garden mulch, compost, and blended soils with our experienced crews and trucks, including our landscape rock and bark products as well. We're proud of our industry-leading, state-of-the-art composting facilities. We also can take care of your fuel oil and firewood needs. Grimm's Fuel, building great gardens since 1929. Hey everybody, I'm Brian Bauman from Bauman's Farm and Garden and we grow lots of different varieties of tomatoes. It's hard to figure out which is the right one for you. Start by figuring out if you want a determinate or indeterminate tomato. A determinate tomato like Oregon Spring, developed at Oregon State University, produces all of its tomatoes at once. So you get this nice, big, glorious, bountiful batch of tomatoes. An indeterminate like this heirloom variety, Mortgage Lifter, giant tomatoes, it produces them throughout the summer so you don't have to deal with them all at the same time. Don't forget when you're planting them to use some tomato tones. It takes about three tablespoons of this when you're first planting it. It's an organic fertilizer that's gonna help your tomatoes. But here's a little trick to remember. Stop fertilizing your tomatoes out around the 4th of July. We wanna start stressing them out and getting them ready to produce lots of tomatoes for you during the summer. Come out to the farm and we'll help you pick the perfect tomato plant. Head on over to our YouTube page for Bowen Farms or come on down to the farm, we'd love to see you soon. Judy, what are you doing? You said to follow you. Follow us on Facebook. Oh, man. Well, we invite all of our viewers to follow the Garden Time page on Facebook. And on our Facebook page, you'll find links to stories, you'll see upcoming events, and you also might even find a funny joke or two. So don't forget, go to the GardenTime.tv webpage and click the link for Facebook. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Well, it's springtime, and if you're like me, I'm spending more time outside now with the nice weather. I'm with James from 30 Seconds Cleaner. James, my patio has gotten a little rough looking over the winter, and it needs some help. And you guys have been around for a long time here in Oregon, started out here, and you have great cleaners for taking care of those surfaces outside. Yep, we sure do. Been around since 1977, family owned business, and we make uh, now a couple of uh, cleaners now for outdoors. One's uh, just applications a little different to the other one, um, both easy to use and both give great results. Yeah, and I've, I've used these products here at my house, yeah. and you know, there's a couple of different ways you can use them. You have yes. th as the hose end application, yes. right. and then you have it or in a tank sprayer. Correct. Yeah. So the definitely, you know, preferential as to how you apply it for, you know, different strokes, different folks. And some people like the tank spray with the concentrate um, and others like the convenience of just attaching the hose and away you go. Right. So, you know, and th this is kind of the original that, that's, that's, been, that's been around. That's around the, the original. Yes. That's been around since 77 in that round jug. Right. You know. <laughs> and, it, and it really is. I mean, yep. you put it either in your sprayer or on your hose end. Correct. Spray it on. Yes. You want your surface? Correct. Yep. And let's yep. it. You can either scrub it or not. Yep. And then you just hose it off. Yeah, it just, just depends on the heaviness of growth, porosity of the surface. Um, and certainly, yes, it's, it's definitely the most economical way to go, buying it in the concentrate. Right. Um, and just dilute it with water one-to-one -one in a tank sprayer if it's on heavy moss or further if it's not as bad or mold and algae around the patios that you right. see here. Right. 
And so, James, you talk about hard surfaces, and that's not just necessarily you know, sidewalks and, and siding, right? Absolutely not. So all your planters, um, you know, be it your styrofoam pots or your porcelain pots or even your patio furniture, like you see uh, siding, um, fences, decks, gutters, roofs, you name it. So, so very, very versatile. <laughs> very versatile, yes. And then you know, the other one you have is the... It's kind of more kind of a spray and walk away, right? Correct, yeah. And like the name says, you literally mix this the same way in a tank sprayer. It's also a concentrate, um, saturate the surface, and like the name says, walk away. Right. So you, you just don't spray even have to rinse. Correct. Now, with that one, the one big difference is that does doesn't give the instant result. So, you know, instant results works over time. So this will decay the organic matter on the surface over time over coming weeks it'll die off and erode away with the weather so right and as far as you know spraying these you know since we're outside and doing a lot yeah. of surfaces do we need to worry about kind of you know plants and you know and, and things that are outside always our delicate yeah. plants you know they are picture frames around our home so certainly with the outdoor cleaner that that one there's no issue with, with plants uh, yeah. You can do your patio furniture out on the lawn, rinse it off, and put your patio furniture back on, on your decks. Um, but the spray and walk away, you definitely need caution around your, your plants. It is systemic and it will you know, target a root system. Right. And that's the reason it uh, works on lichen, things like lichen and moss, which you know, are, are plant forms. So, right, because yeah. I like on my patio on sidewalk here, I like us using this one because I'll mix it in with the little tank sprayer. Right. Um, and then I have a lot yeah. more control as to just Correct. being able it's to more spray target, it. Target so I'm not spraying. Getting it Although both there. these products will work fantastic on the surface, but yes, this gives you the benefit of target spraying versus a hose end spray, you know, it's a little less targeted with the spray. Right. And then, you know, yeah. for this one, I'll use it up on my roof because I yes. can get, get up there and spray a larger yeah. area. Large that, surface areas right. are fantastic with this. The new spray we have here reaches 24 plus feet. It's a great new spray that we brought out this year. Right. A lot more ergonomical and easy to use. And you know, you can virtually get it from a ladder down at your gutter. You don't have to get on your roof at all to, to reach the top of your roof, which is right. fantastic. Yeah. John, and the 30 seconds cleaner is pretty readily available out on the market. Where, where is the best place for people to find out where to go? Uh, well, there's no best place, but I can tell <laughs> yeah. you all the places. All the places. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but certainly any home improvement hardware store you know, your lo local stores like your Biomarts, your Fred Meyers in the garden centers, uh, and you know, any, any garden center around town. Right, and you can get on your, your website and find a, find a dealer locator to find, yep. a, find a place Yeah, you just you. type in your zip code there and it'll show you a retailer near you. So right. certainly convenient and available out there. Right, so, yeah. well it truly is you know, an easy product to use. It, you know, it's quick, it's safe. You know, I use it on my house. And I love it. I was hooked after because I didn't like doing all, yeah. the, all the pressure washing all yep. the time where I could just spray this and, and clean it. So, yeah, so. You know, for more information on the 30 Seconds Cleaner, make sure you go to their website or you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over. So, James, it's always a pleasure to be out here with you and we appreciate the product. We're well, looking forward you. to a nice, clean patio this spring. Well, thank you. Much obliged. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching Garden Time today and it's, hey Ryan, what is with all these plants? Well Judy, a lot of times we have props for our show, but today these are my plant purchases from Seabright Gardens. <laughs> you know, it's a great reminder for us all to be visiting our local independent garden centers and nurseries to get some spring plants for our own gardens. And for more information on today's show or any of our other episodes, go to gardentime.tv. Judy and I thank you for watching and we'll see you next week on Garden Time. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.